Hello, everybody. I am so excited to have you here. I am Susie, and we've got Joe on the line, and he is a creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. So let's get on with our program today. We're going to look at the news, the overall market, hot movers in the basket. We'll look at a crypto screener review, indicators, and most importantly, question and answer. So here's the first news. Ethereum below 2000 potential for future upside is high by Parth on the coinrise.com. Ethereum price analysis for May 31st, 2022 comes on a bearish note for the world's second biggest cryptocurrency as there are increased chances of breaking above the $2,000 price region in the next 24 hours if the bulls remain in control of the price action. Furthermore, as noted in our Ethereum price analysis for May 30th, 2022, the Ether ETH token has a major price resistance beyond 2000, while major support for the token is present below the $1,800 price region. It's also clearly evident from the data from CMC that the token is nearly 60% from all time high. The data from CoinMarketCap shows that the trading volume of the coin surged by 25.76% in the last 24 hours, followed by a 4.15% surge in the market cap. Moreover, the volume market cap has a value of 0 0.0786, while the market dominance rose to 18.21%. The daily candle for Ethereum opened at a price of 1,998 and reached a daily high of 2016. On the other hand, the daily low for Ethereum stands at a price of 1,957. The price of one Ethereum at the time of writing this is $1,972. Next, can blockchain transform the way we communicate? I thought it'd be good for you guys to have some fundamental um, infrastructure talk by Hermy on CoinQuora.com. A lesser known feature of blockchains is the ability to send messages. As blockchains can be used for the storage and transfer of any type of data, most wallets have included the ability to send simple strings of text alongside cryptocurrency transactions. However, this method isn't optimal for mainstream chatting for a couple of reasons. First, ever increasing transaction times cause unwanted delays in message delivery. Second, public blockchains don't bode well for private conversations. Still, blockchains have exposed the potential of decentralized communication networks to enable real-time chatting free of censorship or surveillance. And several products or projects are trying to make this a reality. Talk Lock, a Polish-based privacy company led by cryptocurrency currency industry experts, believes it has cracked the code with its new messenger app. Immune to prying eyes, TalkLock's messenger guarantees fully confidential correspondence between businesses and individuals. It will achieve its milestone soon by leveraging Bluetooth technology to enable direct phone-to-phone -phone communications without the need for cellular data or the internet, even over long distances. Effectively, the app creates a decentralized communication network that can't be intercepted or shut down from the outside. To protect users, the app sends messages anonymously through the encrypted tunnels that disallow anyone but intended receivers from reading them and um, automatically deletes messages. Furthermore, because communications are handled directly between phones, neither TalkLock nor any other entity can access live message contents. Through the TOL token, TalkLock will provide investors with earning opportunities like passive profit sharing and token holding rewards. Early investors who purchase 1,000 or more TOL will receive additional benefit of lifetime messenger access for themselves and one other person. I don't know about you, but I want some TalkLock. All right. Next on the news and last on the news, we have Cardano overtakes Ripple to become the sixth biggest cryptocurrency by market cap. By Juhi on ethereumworldnews.com. 
Cryptocurrency Cardano has soared 27% in anticipation of its upcoming Vasile Hard Fork upgrade. The currency has outrun Ripple to become the sixth biggest cryptocurrency by market cap. Cardano is rapidly evolving into one of the leading cryptocurrencies as it has recently outrun Ripple to become the sixth biggest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. According to crypto price tracker CoinMarketCap, the current market cap of Cardano is sitting at $22.57 billion as compared to Ripple's $20.19 billion. Cardano soars ahead in anticipation of its up-and-coming Vasile Hard Fork upgrade. Cardano's latest price surge and ascent can be accredited to the fact that the Cardano devs will soon launch its much anticipated Vasil hard fork upgrade. As per coin market cap, Cardano has been consistently rising over the past seven days, reaching a high of 0 0.06692 on May 31st, followed by the slightest gradual slowdown. The cryptocurrency is currently sitting at a price of 0 0.06, so aka six cents. Now we're going to look at the overall market. We'll check out Bitcoin and Ethereum after we look at the overall market. So this morning, when I did this snapshot for you, the overall total cryptocurrency market cap is $1.29 trillion. You can see on the graph below, it went above $1.3 trillion. This is a one week, aka seven day chart. So I did some darkening of the lines and um, you can get this chart at any time of any day on coinmarketcap.com, just touching the arrow on the upper left-hand part of the screen. If you just touch that number, this will pop up. Now, I installed the actual bold market cap price, so that won't be showing on your screen, and I installed the darker lines because I just wanted you guys to see the difference and the journey that the overall crypto land, I say, um, market cap has gone through in the last seven days. So welcome to volatility land, is what I call it. It's fun. You can make it and you can lose it, right? We want you to make it though. So um, this is what has happened. This is where we're at and that is okay. So I accept the market for what it is and uh, let's just move into figuring out how to capitalize on it. So this is coin360.com for my visual learners. I love this, it's got colors, it's got shapes. So what you're looking at is a seven day performance chart in market cap block size. So there's three shades of green and the dark green means that you, the price went up three st steps. The middle medium green, the price went up two steps and the light green, the price went up one step. So when you see a dark green, that's like, a thing say that's that that to tell you it's a great time to take profit when you see a dark red that should that means the price went down three steps so a dark red to me i look at that and say Ooh, when should i buy when should i buy right because it's down it's on sale someone took profit already and it's like down there um the light red means it just went down the price went down one step and the medium red means the price went down two steps so Green means people are buying it, and red means people are taking profit on it. All right, so to zone in on this, I would say if you're in the market to buy, I would check out Phantom, Ape, Soul, Avax, Eagle, HBAR, you know, all of those dark, dark reds, and then go look at those charts and see if they hit the floor yet. And then if you're looking to take some profit, if you're holding Cardano, DREP, you may look into that to seeing how much profit has been made. It looks like Cardano went up 19%. Way to go, Cardano. All right. And just so you guys understand, on Coin360, the block size represents the amount of currency that is invested solely in the entire project. So Bitcoin is the biggest square because it's got 45% of the money of crypto land in bitcoin and looks and what you're looking at is a seven day chart so it shows that in the last week bitcoin went up 7.57 percent and ethereum um 
is medium red and it went down 1.87 percent so very exciting for the people that are waiting to get into the market um just in case you have some of these little obscure coins in your uh in your wallets 200 top gainers by market cap size waves went up 49 percent and we mix went up 30 percent pltc went up 46 percent and then you have WMT went up 27%. Some of these coins, I mean, the, these are not uh, uh, recommendations to buy by all means. This is just so you can see that things are moving in the upward direction. But be very cautious about what you're getting. And this is definitely just for like in case you already have them, it's a good time to take profit. Okay, so we're going to review the crypto mastery.brigade.com coins uh they're the indicators so if you want to get these indicators you can subscribe to mastery.cryptobegrade.com or you can click the link below in this in the um, descriptions so again if you want to get the indicators it's mastery.cryptobegrade.com okay so here's bitcoin usd on a one hour chart with a radar indicator you can see i took the um um it's, it's like I took this scale on the left-hand side, it's like a ruler, to make this blue square on the trading view chart. And in two days and eight hours, Bitcoin went up 8.74%. So this is a one hour chart. So you can see earlier today, Bitcoin did take some big jumps, but not excessive. I mean, 8.74% is pretty good, you know, for us when you're comparing it to stocks, but, crypto land we don't get too excited over that amount all right so here we go on the lower right hand corner you can see with the radar 240 means four hour chart one d is one day one w is one week and one m is one month so for the week bitcoin is up for the day bitcoin is up for the four hours it's down now here's the bitcoin usd one week chart with the radar you can see where bitcoin is moving up so I put a question, have we hit the floor? So we'll jump in live with Joe and we'll look through the charts together. And here's Bitcoin USD one week chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So you have on the upper area, the early reversal indicator, and it shows that on the one week basis that things would go down and it did go down from the day when the early reversal came in. Um, but since then, I think we're moving up. So, and then you have the trend indicator and remember, this is a one week chart. So each bar, each candlestick stands for the average of one week. So once this week is over, most likely you're going to see the trend and things move upward. If the momentum continues in the upward direction that we're seeing on the lower time frames, trend strength indicator is moving its way up. It's not flipped 100%, but we'll see it very soon, I'm sure. And the signal, the trend, all well, the strength in. The trend strength indicator, I'm sorry guys, and the trend are two different indicators. So the trend is showing uh, just white bars. So that's because it's not in the it, it's not in the overbought zone. It's it's still waiting to move upward. And then the trend strength indicator, that's showing that it's still going down. This signal line looks like it could be getting tighter, so it could flip. We're not there yet on the one week basis. And the volatility index is at 11.61, which is amazing. That's a super sale for a one week. Notice in the past of the volatility index to getting it down that low is not normal. So if we've hit the floor, then that would be amazing. Um, so let's let's jump into those charts too live and we'll look at them deeper. So here's Ethereum USD one week performance chart. The radar can take four charts and turn it into one. So it's a super time saver when you like to do deep analytics of your different movements of time frames. So you have the four hour, the one day, the one week, and the one month, and you can customize your time frames. I like to have three radars on on my charts at all times. So I have just every time range you could find. <laughs> I love that. So right now you see Ethereum is uh, for the one week, it looks like it's moving upward. Here's a theory one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. And you can see on the early reversal indicator, 
it's it's showing the bars are in red because if you go to the very bottom of the screen you look at the volatility index that line is in the red zone so when the line is in the red zone then the early reversal chart bars will be in the red zone so this is really looking good for someone wanting to get into the market it is so soon i mean that these prices are I feel like as low as it could go for the moment. Uh, the trend indicator is still looking like it's so almost at that floor. So I can't wait to jump in and see what we can find. And the trend strength indicator, it looks like, you know, it's curving. It looks like it could flip too. We're waiting though, you know, for one week. But, you know, for my intraday traders or people that want to you know, trade earlier than the one week chart, uh, we'll look into those and see where those are at right now. And the signal line is still saying going down and the volatility index is oh, such a good place guys 7.41 is super low so i always say you make money when you buy a house not when you sell it because you got to buy it at the right price so i am uh looking forward to seeing uh ethereum floor get uh confirmed and that way i can uh scoop some up all right, so our baskets are always fluctuating. This is a basket that's been around for a while. So these are more of like a long-term hold. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these coins can be found on Coinbase. So let's look at some hot movers in the basket. So beyond that list of coins, we've really opened the floodgates to just be researching multiple coins simultaneously beyond those so this is just now this morning i took a screenshot of all the coins on our watch list currently that are up for the week and that's where the the green flag comes from and then i also categorized it by what's up for the moment so ogn usd is up 34 percent cardano up 9.36 percent sushi yasmi stellar lumens Seagold, AXS, Matic, and then the other ones are down for the moment, but for the week, they're still up. So on your watch list on TradingView, you can organize your watch list by the percentage of the change of the coin for the current pricing, the amount of change in price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what's ripe and ready to sell. And these coins are up for the day, but I always look for coins on the floor to be ready for my next low buy. So we're gonna look at the crypto screener. This is on TradingView and it's a simple moving average rating. So you can find that on the bottom area of your TradingView account. And Coinbase has a place that you could select all the Coinbase strong buy and sell section. Um, you can go to filters and you can filter that out. So this is how you do that. Go to filters and you could type in Coinbase or whatever exchange that you have, assuming that it's on TradingView. And then that way, when you pull up your coins, you could pull up by just the coins that are on Coinbase. So I just want to let you know that if you just want to pull up the coins that are on your watch list, you select the watch list flag. It's the little color zone to the left of the ticker symbols and you make sure that you put them all that same color and then on the left hand side of your screener you would click that flag and make it the same color so um what this is and what these labels are i wanted to make sure that you understand how to read them you can sort by moving moving average rating you can sort by last price you can sort by your simple moving average of 20 50 or 200 days and the little tiny S and the B, the S stands for sell and the B stands for buy. So we're going to review the indicators. So again, if you want to get the indicators or subscribe, go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com and the link will be below. So here are the indicators. You have the volatility index, the ERI indicator, a dynamic ATR, a trend indicator, a TSI, a radar screener, and a signal line. So Radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list. It confirms trade progression. It shows four different chart times. It can be applied to multiple indicators and allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. 
I love the radar, because, but I like to have four radar, like three radars at least on my charts. But I won't overwhelm you most likely on this um, tutorial. So on the left hand side, you can see this little spoke where it says radar. If you click on that spoke, you can customize the time frames there. On the lower right, you can see um, these time frames: 60, 240, 1D, and 1W stand for 60 minutes, four hours, one day, and one week. And then you can change the time frames to closely monitor your price before buying or selling. So sometimes when I'm doing intraday trading, I like to do three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. So I, I know exactly what's happening with that particular asset class like right away. So the trend indicator, it's used to set alerts. And step one is the key will pop up to indicate there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming. So you stay alert and get ready. Step two, the bell indicator pops up, but it confirms trend direction. This means that the upward direction is strong. You may want to take action. Step three, numbers one through seven confirm trend direction with these numerical numbers. The one is the beginning of the first bar from which all buy conditions are met. Two to seven is the total number count of the present cycle. If buy condition criteria are still met, the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's an example. You have the key opportunity where the key pops up, the bell, so the bell alert, and then you have one to seven, it confirms the trend. So if you look at the screen and you see where it says one, two, three, four, dollar sign, six, money bag, those are there to remind you to take profit. Yes, I said that. You need to take profit. Because if you don't take profit, then you're not making any money. <laughs> and it's both, it could go both ways. People say like, oh, I lost money in the market. You didn't lose money unless you sell. You didn't make money unless you sell. If you buy and hold, then, I don't know, it's like your money's just sitting somewhere and you're not winning or losing. You're just waiting, okay? So make sure you take profit. All right, so the volatility index, it shows overbought or oversold conditions used with shorter time frames. Three, the signal line, it shows trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red. And then the TSI is the trend strength indicator. It shows early trend reversal when green plots start. It shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. And the ERI early reversal indicator, the green arrow up means the conditions for soon upward trend are present. And the red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. So here's an example. This is not today's Bitcoin prices, just for the example here. So you have Bitcoin, you have those, those green arrows on the top section. When you see that come in, it says, oh, guess what? This asset or this coin or token, or, or it could be a stock because these are transferable to with, beyond crypto, means this is going to move up. And then when you have the red arrow, it says, all conditions are showing that this is about to go down. I call it like the Houdini indicator. The next indicator, the trend indicator, this is great. Very simple to understand. Green line means this price is moving upward, it's getting more expensive. And a red line means the cost of this is going down. The trend strength indicator, that is pretty easy too. You have green arrows, well green, yeah, little mini arrows saying, hey, the price of this is going up, and red saying, oh, the price is going down. And the signal line, beautiful. You have a green dot says, hey, guess what? The upward trend is happening with this. And when you have a red dot and a red line, it means, guess what? The cost of this is going down. Very simple. And then the volatility index, this is my favorite. It says overbought and oversold. So um, I'm going to show you in the next slide what's important about volatility index. Here it is. All right. So it's not financial advice, okay? It's just is what I love this indicator, though. The volatility indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price. So to simplify this, I take profits when it's in the green zone, and I buy it when it's in the red zone. So let's talk about the zones. So let's go down to the red zone. It's my favorite section. And I like going to the clearance section at the store where you, you're getting something at 70% off. So when you see that thick red line the first red line there's a number attributed to that it's a 20. so you could set your alerts say you're a fan of bitcoin and you just want to start accumulating bitcoin well you're like all right great so 
I want to know when Bitcoin volatility index on a one week chart hits below the 20 line, which is like where it's at right now, guys. That's how exciting this is. Um, and, and that's when you know you're going to even look at it to buy. You may not even want to touch something unless it's down in this volatility zone. And then you closer from zero to 20 within that oversold zone is where I like to purchase it in. Now, when that gives me a lot of room to grow, so I would call that my floor. And then when it gets up to the green zone, the number you need to know uh, that is essential on that zone is 80 to 100. That's the overbought zone. That's where I take profits. So if I had the ideal buy in the red zone, I wait for it to grow to the green zone, and then I sell. It's silly, as simple as it may seem, but watch your charts and look at all the other indicators and look for the volatility index to be in the red zone and see what happens after that. All right, again, go to mastery.cryptobrigade.com. I know a lot of people on this um, would want to get the indicators or you need to renew, so check that out. And this is the most exciting part. We're going to do question and answer, and Joe is on the line. So I'd love to unmute you guys, too, and see if you guys have any questions. So, Joe, how are you? How is your trading going? And if anybody on here wants to get unmuted, let me know. Hello. Hi, Susie. Oh, hey. How are you? Okay. How's it going? It's good, and, and I want to tell you something. Um, KS just said something, if you don't mind me um, telling what he just said in a message. Um, so, guys, I know we talked about OGN. Um, uh, KS says, OGN looks like it's over 60% since yesterday, likely a pump, so would not buy at a current level, would wait for a pullback toward the midpoint of the one-day candle. So he's saying one day. And uh, good, good call on that. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Joe? Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it finally started to go. <laughs> but he has a good it, point. It could be a pump. It could be a syndicate of people. It's a dramatic move. Marketing, right? What's the marketing deployment? Yeah. Well, you know, right now, like across the board, Things are um, kind of trending, but you know, one of the things in particular that we've been following along with the last couple of weeks is the trend indicator. And uh, this is something that's kind of turned on a bunch of markets where it's changed from red to green. And uh, I would say right now, you know, you won't know until really the close of the day, but you see how that volatility uh, index is still down there. Um, on the red, so yeah, there still can be more room for it to go. Yeah, it's like a point there. I mean, let's let's do a little deeper dive and say, well, how much did it go down in the last, let's say, from here, like from the bottom. So it's 73% off from what it was 72 days ago. Right? Well, you know, if she takes at least a 50% retracement, it, it should be good for another few hundred points. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I but I think KS, I completely understand. If you want to get unmuted, let me know. Um, the caveat is projects that do go to zero. We have seen those recently. Yeah, we're talking. He's talking about Luna, guys. So taking profit on a regular basis and setting all bets are off. Joe, you said that ABO stop loss is important. Yeah. 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 So, yeah you know. Bets. So you know, one of the things in here is that the, the uh, TSI still has a little bit more room to go. To becoming overbroad. So I mean, it's uh, it'd be interesting to see how far you know this bar goes today. But also, there's still a little bit more room in there on the tools. You know, the TSI can 
move up until the uh, over broad zone. Yeah. So KS said people will start. We'll take piece of people will take profits on OGN after the pump. We'll just say that just after that. I'm not going to insinuate a pump. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But he's right. I mean, there's profits to be taken. So I agree. I mean, it's it's and it's one of those things where Joe always tells us guys is to get in right there. So if you had gotten in right where the signal line started, or if you had inched in where the bell was, or if you had gotten in, and this is a one day chart right here, then let's take the ruler and go back to this date where the TSI was and go into where it is. That's 72% up. Right? Since the when the TSI indicated, hey, time to get in. So absolutely agree with KS. It's definitely profit time. So does anybody have any questions you want to ask Joe or any any um charts you want to look at? We have a good 29 minutes left. This is gonna be fun. We can really look at the market together. Um, all right, no, nobody wants to get on me to Joe, so it's the Susie and Joe show, so I guess we'll keep going. Yeah, so, you know, uh, let's go take a look in here, you know, at some of the, um, one of the other coins that's on the list, uh, the Matic. Uh, you know, Matic and this one here is just, yeah, well, here's, and, and this one here is. Uh, did you want to look at, that was Cardano I just had, but here's Matic down here. Yeah. And if you can, um, you know, uh, hide the ATR and uh, hide two of the radars. What I time frame kind of, are you like? What was that? So oh, oh, I love uh, looking at all these, but which one do you, what time frame do you like to look at? Well, let's just keep the basic one. Um, so just hide the first one and the okay. last one. And that way we keep things on on the 60 and if you can uh, um, drag that down um, and put that on the bottom okay. you went by the volatility index yeah yeah just all the way down there. <laughs> the easier oh nice all right there we go okay perfect so um, what I wanted to point out was is that when we last spoke. Um, Hold on. Can you just, I'm so sorry, Joe. Um, I usually like to just touch these buttons to move it, but I'm going to, it's going to take a second. I got to save this and then I need to refresh my trading view. So I may have to come back to it to actually move it. Don't know why, guys. My um, system just requires a lot of saving. Okay. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay. Okay. So go ahead, Joe. Sorry about that. Well, what I wanted to just kind of point out on this is that, uh, you know, here's a, a case point where is that the signal line crossed and the volatility index still stayed red and it kind of like drifted lower. And uh, it just hasn't been until recently, the last couple of days that the moving average has finally turned green. So usually when we come into, you know, um, a beginning of a new month, you know, you, you get short covering or you get different profit taking, uh, depending on which way the trend is going. And what we're seeing right now is, is just not in this market, but we're seeing it and um, and a lot of the cryptos, where it is that, uh, it's reaching a threshold, and we should see some type of relief. Um, I'm not sure whether we're going to actually follow through on this big move, uh, on this move up. A 50% retracement from where we're at now is very tangible, like reachable. Um, uh, this right here is just one example in here. Uh, I just wanted to point out 
in particular is because we got the ERI, which uh, triggered yesterday. So you see that ERI, Susie, up there at the top, the vertical green line? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, let me just, so you can pull this down so you can see it right there. Yeah. So, you know, you would have had the bell alert when it came in earlier. And I just think the market has just kind of got flat, you know, because there's a lot of these coins that lost such a dramatic amount. And uh, right now, you know, we're getting some type of relief. So uh, this right here, uh, we finally have the ERI, which kicked in. And um, uh, you want to, we're going to wait and see if we see follow through from this. So this one may have not moved yet. And the, if you change that to the Cardano as well, Susie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, it's beautiful, Joe. All right. So this is another one in particular, um, which, you know, the next day, like when you get the ERI print, it's very important that day uh, because that day the market may reverse or the next day you may have the follow through. And then within two days, you may have missed the move if, if, if you're just late. Um, that's why it's important to set the alerts because everything is so, such a timely issue with everything. So ADA, um, Matic, Grant, I'm getting my shopping list. It's like I'm going to go to the grocery store after this. Just kidding, guys. I'm actually going to like do it on my phone. Keep talking, Joe. I'm going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, all these coins, they all sold off, and they all kind of seems like they all go up together. The, the question is, is, is that which one out of all these coins is going to actually have the, the best gains? And, um, you know, I'm just pointing out a couple in particular. And then, like, if you go in here to, and here's an interesting one. If you go to LRC, right, let me show you about this one. All right, let me see. Nobody's talking on the questions box. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm running that one right. down. This is awesome. And. You know, if you take a look at the ERI, you notice how like it went green, it went red, and then it went green. So, you know, it's showing you in here um, the market bottoming itself out. Now, that's something in there like really, uh, when you see this type of a pattern, we should see follow through and, and see a new high put in. Now, if you notice on the trend indicator, you see how the trend indicator there was a moment in there, Susie, for like three days where it stopped printing numbers. Yeah, one, two, three, four. It even went red, and then you can see that resistance follow through yeah. here and a little bump. But it's amazing you know, that you know, the signal line kept going, though. Well, what happens is if you look at the market price, it, it stopped trending. And and it just shows you that how the indicator works, whereas is if the market has been putting in a higher high or, or a lower low, that, you know, it's not going to keep giving you a number. There's an actual, you know, formula behind that, which creates the numeric values. So unless you're getting, you know, um, you know, they, they call it a staircase trend, right? And that's like, you know how you got the stairs that you walk up? Yeah. You know, like a staircase. Well, the market's supposed to move it, 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 in that type of a staircase motion up, up, upward. You know, but if in the yeah. event the market stops putting in that higher high for whatever reason, well, you know, the, the indicator re reacts accordingly. And then that's when you see it stop printing the numbers, it, it shut off, stop doing the colors. And turns. So uh, I just wanted to point that one out. And it looks like a lot on here with the ERI. Oh, and look at this one in here on Adam, just to take a look at this. 
And then these are all coins like that, that I'm in. And these coins are, you know, looking to make a comeback. So, you know, I'm just like everyone else. You know, there's a lot of these coins that caught me by surprise. And I never, and I never got out right now. But it's it's good to know, uh, like this one here, Susie, on the um, Atom. You can go to that one. That there is potential clues of some type of a bottom that's being put in place. And then and then here you go right here. So this is another one that I like. I'm I'm in this. Yeah. And the thing is, is that when this market actually started making the move down, um, like even me with all these tools, I got a lot of times I downside. You know, I actually do that when I'm trading. So, you know, I, I still end up with positions, but I end up carrying over. And uh, there's a lot of these different coins in particular that um, even though that I downsized, I'm still in these markets right now, just like everyone else. So, um, and now I'm utilizing the tools for the clues um, of what I need to happen in here. Uh, to for the market to recover now what's good about this market is that they pay you interest on this so at least I'm, I'm collecting interest while i'm holding these positions um it's not the highest in the world so you're speaking no. on coinbase yeah yeah I, i'm an atom in there i mean i'd like for them to add another zero to what i'm collecting and then i'd be happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think like 10 years down there would be a better thing. Look, with the way inflation is, that, that 4% that they're paying me is not working right now um, on this. But for the most part, um, this one here looks promising and it looks as if uh, we're putting in some type of a bottom and we do have the ERI uh, that says yes. So that's one in particular. You know, I wanted to hit, and the, like if you go in here, uh, let's take a look in here at the main, the main ones in here. Let's go first to the Litecoin. Again, like another reversal. Let's see if Litecoin there it is. So I, guys, I organized my watch list before class today, and I got all these are up for the week. So Joe, pick whatever. There's so many to choose from. So the market has definitely swung for the upswing yeah yeah it, it, you know the question is is, is uh how far we actually move from this point um uh. but that one here in particular we have the eri which triggered and you know what it feels like I don't know if you ever went to Whitewater, but you go to the wave pool and they're like, okay, the wave pool is off and then everybody's like oh they go out and they sit on the benches and then it's like the wave pool is on. And everybody's like, yeah, I feel like that's what's happening in crypto land. The wave pool is now on, splish, splash. And everything starts moving because <laughs> that's what's happening. So go ahead. I, I just thought I'd give you guys that visual. <laughs> We're in the wave pool now. So <laughs> wear your goggles, plug your nose, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> if you can't swim, put a life jacket on, you know, know, know your boundaries, know your limits, know how tall you are, how deep of the water you can get it. Don't get too deep, right? Anyways, yeah. Go ahead, because it's exciting right now. Well, well, you know, one of the things is is, is that it, it, it's promising in here, you know, because of such the retracement that, that the market has pulled back, you know? I mean, because this thing, you know, just like when we looked at the other example, uh, and even over here in the Litecoin, you know, a lot of these coins has moved back over 60% from where they were. So, you know, right now the question is, is that have we put the low in? And that's why I'm kind of pointing out in particular today the ERI, because that's um, one of the uh, chart overlays that it kind of seems like has triggered on a lot of these different coins. See? And, um, yeah. So right, right here is another example. And if you make that chart a little uh, smaller, a little tighter, I just wanted to just try to take a look wow. at from the top to bottom. Uh, look at the last time this triggered. Litecoin, look at this, guys. 
the last time Litecoin was green was in April. Okay, it seems like a million years ago, but <laughs> I forgot this is a one day chart. Yeah. So if we take a look in there, you know, it's been in, in a in a, in a significant trend, and um, right now we want to keep our eyes uh, and look for any type of follow through. So, um, and, and then if you go in here to the um, the Bitcoin, because right now this is up 600 points today. There you go. Now the bell alert, Susie, come in right on there on the 23rd. So if anyone was in there with the bell alert, and that's the last one of the trend, you had to wait a few days for it actually to to manifest itself. I mean, sometimes you don't get instant gratification. But if we take a look at the chart in particular, we go back to the ninth, right? That's when we we seen the first clue, which was the volatility index, right? And that happened on the ninth. Down. And following that, then we had the signal line that took place. And it, well, actually, it looks like the TSI. So we have the, the volatility index uh, on the ninth, which. Um, which are you saying like, to, right? Oh, meaning like the volatility was super low on the ninth? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. Just where the big like downward happened. Yeah, and, and as soon as that um, gives its first clue, you know, you could scale in your position there. And then the second clue would be the TSI. You can see the TSI start to change. Yeah, and, as long as you've uh, got a good fundamental product. Yeah. And then the third clue would be the signal line. So, you know, yeah. if you if you look at that in particular, once you got the signal line, that was your last one um, before the trend indicator. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, you know, this is beautiful. The signal line and the TSI kind of lined up because there was like a downward day right here and then it came back up. Yeah, so, the, you know, the whole thing is, is that this is good to know because I'm in Bitcoin as well. And... Um, my alerts went off. I, I I didn't buy, keep buying, you know, uh, you know, because I don't know what's going to happen. But it was really good uh, comfort feeling uh, to know that the technology gave the confirmation on the bell alert and that it, it could potentially turn. And, and right now, I don't know, you know, how far this market's going to go. Um, I'm nervous because I don't know. But um, if it does make the recovery. Uh, from here and start to move higher, uh, I'll see the confirmation within these tools. Like you see that trend indicator, Susie, where it's on number three? If the market continues to make higher highs, that number will change to four. Right. And then it'll start to go higher, five. So there's a good chance, uh, you know, maybe within between now and the next couple of days, uh, we start to see some type of um, talent uh, okay, in also. this market. Go. No, but go look at this for the calendar man. We're also at 32. So basically, the upper band is going to say 32,000, and it hit it temporarily. So yeah, it, we'll it, see if it's going to push beyond that resistance line. Well, right now it's going to become like a, a make it or break it. It's either going to yeah. at these levels. Uh, turn around and this is going to be some type of a top or we may actually see uh, the market follow through yeah but I think it's a you know at a significant point if you take a look at the uh, the weekly right is that you wanted to see the weekly yeah yeah what we really need here Oh, this is, is we really need that TSI to give the first green dot. That's what we really need. And and that's something in there. This is a weekly chart. We won't, we won't have that actual print until next week. 
Um, but um, between now, uh, the next couple of trading days, uh, you see how you have that Kessler band, uh, the bottom band, Susie? Yeah. Right? It is so <laughs> awkward when you see these different time frames because you get, I love intraday, but when I pull it out this far, even though this, this one week is showing up on the radar, I feel like it's, this one's so far behind. Now you see that middle band? Yeah. Right, the blue right one? Here? Yes. 38,000. That right there. Yeah. And, and you see that right there would be my level, um, which would confirm whether or not this trend is over or not. And, you know, I just want to leave everyone with a level that I'm looking at, um, which is really coming from the weekly. Right there, yeah. that bat. Well, let's look at everything on a on a weekly basis, guys. Look at this volatility. You're at twelve point one four, which is beautiful. This signal line is not getting any tighter at the moment, which is awkward. But maybe in the next day it'll tighten up fast. Maybe some sharp movements. Um, this is getting closer. This is getting closer. Yeah. Well, we need and earlier that, work to come in. Well, you know, the way these weeklies are, if you look at how many, I mean, if you look at how, how many weeks down, this thing's actually been going down since December. Yeah. If you make that uh, chart a little bit tighter. Right there. Yeah. This is a beautiful to look at this, guys, because of how low it is on the counter band on the top. Okay, so last time, it hasn't been that below the band in a Look so far, not any time here. I mean, not even down here was it below that. Something broke Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin's been <laughs> broken. <laughs> like they broke Bitcoin. So either we have like a absolute like jack in the box, meaning like it's just cranking, cranking, waiting for this thing to pop. Because this is way low in comparison to past performance. Right here, okay, well, that, that is the one time, March 16th, 2020. And look what happened after that. Dunk. That, that was probably the one, okay, let's see. And let's see. So past that, like a year later, it went up 1,113%. I'll take that. I'll take that, right? <laughs> so, so if if this if history repeats itself when it got back into this like pullback position, what's uh what's the price today times a thousand one hundred thirteen percent? Thirty two. That's like three hundred thousand. Is that right? So you're gonna have like one, two, three, three zeros. Well, well, here's what's happening with Bitcoin. You got you got a word word that's going on, and and I don't know. I think that's just something unexpected the market nobody expected. You know, like we all were getting ready to come into this year, you know, and we all had goals that were set. And then all of a sudden, things go left. Now there's a war that happens. And then on top of a war, right, um, now we're hit with a lot of these uh, inflationary factors that we weren't dealing with last year. So I think that every all the elements really are there. It's just that, you know, the question, Susie, is can Bitcoin rally with a war? Can can the market rally during a war? You know, and and I don't know that answer because that's it's kind of like a little bit, you know, beyond me right there. Um, because I haven't actually lived through a war. Um but but that's the question right now, and and you know if there was like some type of resolution, there's no telling within 24 hours what kind of reaction that would have with the market. I mean, it, it could completely explode and just go through the roof. Um, you know because you know that's uh, that's kind of been like the a little bit of the unexpected wild card in this game. We have a question in the questions box. Um, Terry says, on the weekly chart for MEME, even though all the radar signals are all green, there's a green arrow on the ERI and a volatility index. 
is in the red. Would you still wait for the TSI to turn green to buy? So let's look at MEME. Um, uh, Terry, what, where are you buying this from? So I can make sure I get the right exchange. I want to say he's buying it in Qcoin maybe. By the way, I think Qcoin is kicking all Americans off. Um, so make sure that if you have money on Qcoin, you get it off. Um, hmm. Terry's not talking. Terry, I unmuted you in case you want to um, talk to us. You can, you can Google it there. Um, for the uh, daily chart. Well, and what, and what, what did he say in here there was? Okay. So Terry said on the weekly chart for Emmy, even though all the radar signals are all green, there's a green arrow on the ERI. So he's looking at the weekly. Well, oh, but this there's one. not. Ask him, is this the right chart? Yeah, and then and the volatility index is red. Yeah, the, yeah. Let me look at if if me maybe Poloniex. That's better. All right. Okay, so ERI, and then he was saying that even though well, all the radar it, it, signals are all green. Oh, okay. Do I have a radar? Weekly is down. The um, the volatility index is in the red. Would you still wait for a TSI to turn green to buy? So he's asking you about the TSI. Do you wait to buy on the TSI right here? Well, the the you could with the volatility index that thing can be in the red for a while. So you know you could scale into your position there, you know, um, or you could wait for the TSI. Now for me, I generally uh, scale in. Now in this case point, I probably wait for the TSI. Just because the way the market's been, and some of these different markets in particular, um, you know, the uh, you have to make sure that you have data. So when it comes to the weekly, there's not that much data there, Susie, um, yeah. and that's why it shows that RSI down there like that. But if you go to the daily, uh, I would be looking at the trim indicator. And looking for the trend indicator to turn green for that next confirmation, and and also the TSI. Yeah, and you know one thing that bothers me about this one. Let me just. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's it's like a could be something that's going to blow. But let's kind of look it up. So if you have a. a Point like that. Mean in you. There's, there, you know what, Joe? We could have been picking the wrong one because there's four of them. Um, Terry, are you on here? All right. Well, I don't know why Terry's not talking, but I, I unmuted him. So that's the thing. Are we doing meme in you, meme verse, memic, or degenerator meme? <laughs> You know, I'm hoping we're doing. Oh, Terry, it's you. How are you? <laughs> it's mimetic. Mimetic. Yeah, I think it's got. It's not. It's no longer all green since I wrote that question. So. <laughs> oh, but so it changed fast. So mimetic. Yeah. All right. And we're um just so you guys want to see kind of like if you had a coin like that or someone says oh buy this, you could say what market are you on? Did you buy it on Bitrix? No, I was just, I haven't bought it. I was just charting it on um, TradingView. All right. And then at which exchange would you be purchasing on when you did purchase it? I when I you was would? It on um, Coinbase. Let me look again. Mimetic. Oh, Bittrex. 
Okay. And are you are you American? Yes. Are you in America? Yes. I didn't think that we could trade on Bittrex. Well, like I said, I'm I'm not buying it. I'm just trying to learn these charts, and I've been following them on your list on um, okay. Trading View. <clears throat> gotcha. All right. So um, yeah, yeah. I I mean I didn't I didn't pick that one. Did um did somebody pick that one that you're working with? It was listed in, or mentioned in one of the previous classes, I okay. think. Well, okay. Susie, Probably when you take a look at this, <laughs> right? When you take a look at this, right? We had the uh, bell alert, right? And uh, that bell alert looks like it took place like on the 16th. Um, but it just looks like, again, the last couple of days, it just started to move. And so you were saying in there that, you know, the radar was green. And it is green. So I, I think that you come a long ways. You're starting to understand these charts. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> All right. And uh, the um, this is actually, I, I, would, I would say this is a good find, um, be honest with you. And the reason why would be because is that um, I always look at from the clues from the beginning. So the first thing I see on this is that it looks like on the ninth, the volatility index was in the red, okay? And then um, it looks like the next, we had the uh, signal line cross and the TSI. And then final, finally, we get the bell alert. And it looks like when we got the bell alert, the market just went sideways. And look, that's going to happen because when you look at the chart, Susie, you can see how you know, in between the individual days, like you got the one and then it stopped for two days. Then you get the two and it stopped. So we're seeing it within the math, like it was trying to find the floor, like you said. And then finally, um, the last two days, we, we got the dollar sign and then today's the six. So I would say that's, that's a good find. Like if you were going to buy that, it would have it been best if you would have brought it right there at that bell alert because you want to try to put the positioning on before the numbers start. And when you set your alert, the alert is for the bell alert. So my answer would be to you is, is that you could buy it here. It's a little bit late. You're buying on the 6th, right? Um, the place really to buy it would have been on the bell alert. Uh, that would have been the best. Uh, positioning but um, overall this is a good find because it's trending up higher um, with the uh, radar and the radar is confirming um, the progression of the trade right. but I think in general though what you're saying is she should have gotten it on May 9th when the volatility was down or when the signal oh, first yeah. erupted, right well, you're never going to know. And then what happens is every month, right, the market, you know, shifts again. The money shifts. It's like, it's like I always like look at it like the dealer shuffling, shuffling the deck of cards. So, you know, each month, you know, things get kind of get shifted around again. But uh, um, overall, it's, it's uh, on the move. And, and the best positioning would have been uh, to catch it on the bell alert. Um, you know, maybe because once the numbers start, sometimes the market, like this is cordial, meaning is that like, you see how, like how after you get, got the one, it went sideways. Not every market is like that. You know, like there's some markets in there, like as soon as you, you get the one, when that two comes in, the market may move too fast and then, and it's just taking off again. Like, like if here's an example, Susie. Like, if you go to XML or X, uh, yeah, XML. Like, you see how, like, as soon as you got the two, it popped up, and then we went right to the three. So the 
so sometimes like on this example in here like you got the one and the market was sideways but by the time the two came in and then the three that that's a difference of a few hundred points already um, Joe, we're past the one hour mark and KS has something else to say. So I unmuted KS. And um, if you want to say it really quick, we'd love to hear your voice. All right, I guess not. So I'll just read it to you. Um, KS says, one thing to keep in mind is that crypto markets do not exist in a vacuum. Most value in crypto for now is monetized through fiat inflows whether retail, whales, or institution, institutionals. At global scale, crypto market cap grows only when there is a mass retail buying, mass whale buying, or a mass institutional buying taking positions. Right now, most retail is spooked or waiting for a lower bottom or have given up. Though we have not really seen the level of capitalization this time around most were expecting. Whales and institutions have been doing pump and dump over the last few weeks, but mostly on the sidelines waiting for a lower bottom or buying equities on sale. Until the volatility stabilizes, most retail will remain skittish, likely to enter investment positions as opposed to short-term swing day trading, et cetera, with a tight stop losses. You're a good writer, KS. I wish you would unmute and say hello. Wonderful wallet words. Uh, and... Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll mute myself if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah, like basically what I wrote is that crypto doesn't exist in a vacuum. And if we look at it from the perspective of whales and institutionals, they're always looking where to park their money. And right now, crypto is is depressed. And, and at the same time, they're looking at other sectors as well to see where they can generate sizable returns. And at the same time, they're also looking at Fed's policy. So right now, the dollar has been strengthened uh, by, by the Fed basically bolstering the dollar by, by uh, dumping some of their assets, some of their distressed, uh, distressed assets. So in other words, uh, the, the money supply has been constrained by them. So, so in other words, the dollar is getting stronger. So it's it's safer or perceived a little bit safer for the time being to be in dollars versus versus in crypto. But on in 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 the long run, in in the bigger scheme of things, uh, staying in the dollars is probably not as wise. So it's it's really a short short term parking spot in the meantime. And I also have seen in the news. Uh, as recently as this morning, um, and this goes back to March, uh, they're actually saying that uh, in the U.S., real estate has actually seen an increase in purchasing despite the higher the higher mortgage interest rates. So that that is ought to be telling us something at the same time. That's basically yeah. saying still there is a significant demand, and and like I said. Crypto does not exist in a vacuum. So all of these interplay with each other. We can trade crypto and whatnot, but at the same time, it's useful to keep an eye at, at, at all the markets and, and see how how the how the other markets are doing and whatnot. Yeah, and this is not financial advice, but I love what yes. you're saying. It's a diversification um, process that's continu continuous continuance of movement as long as you continually to move with the ebbs and the flows of the trend and stay on top of it and thanks for bringing up that very valid point that currently i love the perspective how you said it's currently momentarily and that could be changed any moment it's safe to be in the dollar and i like the fact that you explained that it could be strengthening but that's not a good long-term plan to just set it and forget it <laughs> anybody else have anything else you want to say before we jump off yeah, that you know that was also a great comment. You know, I, I like the way you explained that very well. Yeah, where's your accent from? It's beautiful. Oh, it's not local. <laughs> yeah, you're in. I feel like Sweden or something. I don't. I don't know. I I'm actually in the U.S., but I'm not local. I've I've uh, been local for a few years. Okay. 
Gotcha. All right. We'll leave your privacy at that. All right. Well, it's so excited to have you here and to talk to you guys. And, and this will be on YouTube. So if you guys want to see it, you know, within this week. So thanks for talking on this. And Diaz, any other questions or anything you want to say before we jump off? Joe, you want to say goodbye? Okay. All right. Well, um, other than that, uh, good luck trading. And uh, let's see in here if we get a weekly um green on the tsi so the the weekly won't complete the close until sunday so next week when we speak uh it'll be interesting to see that if we can get a closing bar on the weekly to try to confirm this type of price movement that we're seeing good luck trading everyone all right guys i will see you next week bye